Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering InterConnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are live in, in Las Vegas for IBM InterConnect 2017. It's theCUBE's coverage of IBM's cloud show, cloud and data show. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Abby Kearns, Executive Director of Cloud Foundry uh, Foundation. Welcome to theCUBE. Welcome, thank Thanks you. for joining us. So Cloud Foundry, your new executive role, Sam had moved on to Microsoft. So Google. Google, I'm sorry, Google. He was formerly at Microsoft, <laughs> formal Microsoft employee, but at Google, Google Cloud Next was a recent show. Yeah. Um, so you're new, I'm took new. the reins, but you're not new, you're in the, in the community. I've been in the part of the community for several years. Prior to joining the foundation a year ago, I was at Pivotal for a couple of years. So I've been part of the Cloud Foundry community for several years and it's, it's a technology that's dear and dear to my heart and it's a community that I am very passionate about. And the emergence of Cloud Foundry, I think about it, has really kind of changed the game. It's really lifted all the boats, if you will. Rising tide floats all boats. IBM uses it, you got a lot of customers. Just go down the list of the notable folks working with Cloud Foundry. Well, I, I look no further than those that are on our board and those that represent the strategic vision around the Cloud Foundry, so IBM, yeah. <laughs> Pivotal, uh, but Dell EMC and Cisco and SAP and VMware and Allianz and Swisscom and you know of course Pivotal and I think all of them really bring such a, a broad perspective to the table. But then broadening beyond that community, our community has grown so much since, so a lot of people don't realize that Cloud Foundry has only been an open source project for just a little over two years. So January 2015 marked when it became an official open source project. Prior to that it was part of Pivotal. And in that two, a little over two years, we've grown to nearly 70 members in our community and um, are just excited to continue to grow and bring more perspectives to the table. So what has been the differences? A lot of people have been taking a different approach on, on for Bluemix, for instance, they have good core Cloud Foundry. Is it going the way you guys had thought as, as a community that this was the plan all along? Because you see people really kind of making some good stuff out of the Cloud Foundry. Was that part of the plan, this open direction? Well, I think part of the plan was really coalescing around the single vision of that abstraction. And what's the whole vision of Cloud Foundry? It's to make, allow developers to create code faster. Yeah. And whatever realm that takes. And our industry is evolving, and it's evolving so quickly and exciting. All of these organizations, these enterprise organizations that are becoming software companies. And how is, I mean, how exciting is that? And yeah. as we think about the abstraction that Cloud Foundry can provide for them and the automation it can provide and allows them to focus on one thing and one thing only, creating code that changes their business. And so we're really focused myopically on ensuring that developers have the ability to quickly and easily create code and innovate quickly as an organization. So on the, on the development side, I mean sometimes standards can go fall down by forcing syntax or you know, forcing certain things. You guys had a different approach. What was the, looking back now, what, was, what were the key things that were critical for Cloud Foundry to maintain its momentum? I think uh, a couple of things. You know, obviously, it's a complex distributed system, but is, is put together amazingly well. Quality was first and foremost part of its origins. And it's continued to adhere to that quality and that control around the development process and around the release process. So Cloud Foundry as an open source project is very much a governance by contribution. And so we look for those in the organizations and different communities to be part of it and contribute. And so we have the full-time committers that are basically doing this all day, every day. And then we have the contributors that are also part of the community providing feedback and, and value. And there was a big testimonial with American Airlines on stage. That's a big win. Yes, it is a big win. What's, give, some, give some color on that, that deal. I, I can't give you any details on the deal that, that IBM has. But that's a Cloud Foundry, IBM. But it is Cloud Foundry, yes. You guys were part of the Blue Mix thing. Yes. Okay. And, and, and American Airlines um, is a company that I have a lot of history with. They were a customer of mine for many years in the early 2000s. So I'm thrilled to see them yeah. innovating and, and taking advantage of a platform. So uh, help us unpack this conversation that's going on around PaaS, right? Some people say, oh, PaaS is passe, but it's development tools and it's, and it's programming and, and, and it's a platform that you've created. So what do you make of that conversation? What, is it, what implications does it have to your strategy and your ecosystem strategy? 
Well, I, for one, don't like the term PaaS anyway, so I'm happy to say it's PaaS. It's PaaS. Okay. <laughs> um, because I do think it's evolved. So when I talk about Cloud Foundry, I talk about it as a cloud application platform. Because at the end of the day, our goal is to help organizations create code faster. You know, the high degrees of automation, the abstraction that the platform brings to the table isn't just a platform, it is an enabler for that development. So we think about what that means. It's can I create applications faster? And do I have proliferation of services to your ecosystem point that enable those applications to be to grow and to scale and to, to change the way that organization works? Because it's a technology-enabled business transformation for many of these organizations. It's app-driven too, that's the key to success. It's app-driven, which is why we talk so much about developers, is because it, that, that's the key. If I'm going to become a software company, what does that mean? I am writing code, and that code is changing the way I think about my business yeah. and my consumers. And the app landscape has certainly changed with UX creativity, but now you've got IoT, there's a real functional integration going on with the analog world going digital. It's like, whoa, i got all this stuff that's now instrumented, connected to the internet. IOT, Internet of Things. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. Cloud has the power of that. It's, I think it does, because what is IOT relying on? Applications that take advantage of that data. I mean, that's what you're looking to gain. You're have, looking to have small applications streaming large amounts of data from sensors, be it from cars, or be it from a manufacturing plant, if you're thinking industrial IOT. So, Cloud Foundry provides the platform for many of these applications to be developed, created, and scaled at the, at the level that companies like GE and Siemens and others are looking to build out and tackle that IoT space. And it's open, I mean, we can all agree that Cloud Foundry's the most open <laughs> platform to develop applications on, but, you're, but, but developers have choices. You're yeah. seeing you know, infrastructure as a service plus, and you're seeing SaaS kind of minus <laughs> emerge. How should we be thinking about the evolution? You said it earlier, it evolved. Where is it evolving to? I mean, obviously you bet on open. Good bet, right? Other, more proprietary, I don't even know what open is anymore sometimes, but we can agree <laughs> that Cloud Foundry's open. Um, but how should we be thinking about the evolution going forward? Well, that's the beauty of open, right? I, what is open source? Open source brings together a diverse set of perspectives and background to innovate faster. And that's where we are. We're, we're seeing a lot of technology evolve. I mean, just think about all the things that evolved in the last two years, where, where we've had technologies come up, some go down, but there's so much happening right now because the time is now. For these companies that are trying to develop more applications and are trying to figure out ways, not only develop these applications, but develop them at scale and really grow those out and build those and IOT and you're getting more data and we're having, capturing those data and operationalizing that data and it comes back to one thing, applications that can take advantage of that. And so I think there's the potential as we build out uh, and innovate, both the ecosystem but the platform will naturally evolve and take advantage of those, those wins from these organizations that are driving this scale. So scale is the, the linchpin. Yeah. Right, and if you think about traditional PaaS environments, if I can use that term, they're limited in in scale and obviously simplicity. Is that another way to think about it? Well, I think the platform. I think about it this way: the platform enables you to run fast. You know, you're not running fast with scissors. You want to be able to run fast <laughs> safely, and so it provides that abstraction and those guardrails, so you can quickly iterate and develop and deploy code. If I look yeah. at um, what um, let's see, HCSC is a company. They went from developing an application. It took them 35 people in nine months to create an app, right? And now with Cloud Foundry, they're able to do it with four people in six weeks. It changes the way you work as an organization. Yeah. Yeah, just imagine as you scale that out, what that means. And imagine the changes that can bring in your organization when you're software centric and you're customer first and you're bringing that feedback loop And in. you guys do a lot of heavy lifting on behalf of the customer, but you're not hardening it. Hardening it to the point where they can't mold it and shape it to what they want. Kind of what the what I'm. No, we want to give. We want to abstract away and automate as much as possible for yeah. things you care about: resiliency, auto scaling, uh, the ability to do security and compliance, because those are things you care about as an enterprise. But let's get that. Let's make that happen for you. But then give the control to the developer to self-provision, to scale, to yeah. quickly deploy and iterate, do continuous delivery. All of those things that allow you to go from developing an app once a year to developing an app and iterating on that app constantly all the time. So Abby, I want to ask you to kind of take a step back. Um, 
and look at the community trends right now. You see OpenStack has as, as trajectory. It's becoming more of an infrastructure as a service, kind of settling in there. That's gone through a lot of changes. Seeing a lot of growth in IoT, which we talked about. You start to see some movement in the open source community. CNCF has got traction, the Linux Foundation, yeah. Cloud Native, you got Kubernetes. I call it the Cold War for orchestration. Um, you know, going on right now, and it's, it's, so it's a really interesting time. Microservices are booming. This is yeah. the holy grail for developers for the next gen. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. I got machine learning, everyone's getting intoxicated on that these days, so super cool things coming down the pike. For sure, What's I think going we're on in the, in the communities? That, that, is there any movement, is there trends, and is there a sentiment among the developer communities that you see that you could, that you, any patterns developing around what people are gravitating to? I think developers want the freedom to create. They want the ability to create applications and see those come to fruition. And I think, uh, I think a lot of things that were new and innovative a couple of years ago and even now are becoming table stakes. For example, five years ago, having a mobile app as a bank was new and interesting and kind of fun. Now it's table stakes. Are you going to go yeah. bank with a bank that doesn't have one? Then. Are you going to bank with a bank that doesn't have it? It becomes table oh. stakes. Or who doesn't, if yeah. you don't have fraud detection, which is basically event-driven responses, right? And so you think about what table stakes are and what, and as we think about the abstraction moving up, that's really where it's going to get interesting. Yeah, but, the, the, but open source communities are going to move to these new ground. What I'm trying to get at is to see what's happening, what's the trend in the, in the, in the developer community, what's hot, what's fashionable, is there new projects popping up that you could share that you think is cool and interesting? Well, they're or all cool and you'd interesting. you'd rather not comment? <laughs> I think they're all cool and interesting. I think, uh, um, you know, CNCF is a, is a sister is a sister organization underneath the Linux Foundation. Uh, I, you know, so they kind of inherited that from KubeCon, though. Kubernetes Con. Yeah, I think um, they're doing interesting things. I think any organization that's promoting cloud native application architecture and the value of that, you know, we should, we all deserve to be part of the same conversation because, yeah. to your point earlier, rising tide lifts all boat. And yeah. if every organization is doing cloud native application architectures and cloud native solutions. Yeah. It's going to be. Super I mean, we certainly were just at Strata Hadoop. We ran our own event last week called Big Data SV, and it's very clear to us that the the big data world, industry, and cloud are coming together, and the forcing function is machine learning, IoT, and then AI is the you know appeal. You know, that's the that's the the big trend that's kind of kind of put, puts a mental model around it. But IoT is driving this data, and the cloud horsepower yeah. is forcing this to move faster. Seems to be very accelerating. But. It also enables so much. I mean, if you can operationalize this data that you're aggregating yeah. and turn it into actionable apps that do things for your business, save money, improve logistics, uh, reach your users better and faster, you start to see the change and the shift that that can bring. You have the data married with the apps, married with the uh, endpoint sensors, and all of a sudden this gets to be a really interesting uh, evolution of technology. All right, so what's your 100 day plan? Well, you're already in the 100 day plan already. <laughs> Yeah, so what's your plan for this year as new executive director for Cloud Foundry? What's on the agenda? What's your top three things you're going to uh, chip away at this year for objectives? Developers, developers, developers. Does that count as top three? More, more, more. <laughs> Increase the developer count? <laughs> uh, just really reaching out to developers and ensuring that they're able to be successful in Cloud Foundry. So I think you'll hear more from us in the next couple of weeks about that. But um, The proof points, basically. The proof Show points, the but just ensuring they can be successful, ensuring that scale is, is, is applicable for them. And then really, uh, our summits are even changing. Um, we've actually added developer tracks to our summit to make them a place not only where you can learn about Cloud Foundry, but also where you can work with other yeah. developers and learn from them and learn about specific languages, but also how to enable those into cloud native application architectures. And I think yeah. our goal this year is to really enrich that development community yeah. and build that pipeline and help And celebrate fill those the gaps. wins like American Airlines of the world and as IBM and others successful, Absolutely. then it gets to be less, you don't want to have cognitive dissonance as a developer. That's the worst thing that developers want to make sure they're on a good bus to, you know, yeah. you know with well, good people. You've got, you've obviously got some technology titans behind you. IBM, you know, the most prominent, I would say. Uh, but obviously, guys like VMware and Cisco and others. But you've also got uh, organizations, guys like Allianz, uh, Allianz, yeah, W, Allstate. I think was early on in, in the program. JPMC, Citibank. Yeah, I don't want to, I'm, I shouldn't have started because I know I'd leave some out. But <laughs> you're the executive director, so you have to fill in the gaps. But so, 
that's somewhat unique in a, in a consortium like this, somewhat, but that many is somewhat unique. Is there more traction there? What's, what's their motivation? In your As a view? user? Yeah. Well, to, to your earlier point, we're an open source, right? And what's the value? If me, if I'm an enterprise and I'm looking to take advantage of a platform, but also an open source platform, open source allows me to be part of that conversation. I can be a contributor, I can be part of the direction, I can influence where it's going. And I think that is a powerful sentiment for many of these organizations that are yeah. looking to evolve and become uh, more software centric. And this is a good way for them to give back and be yeah. part of that momentum. And cloud's exploding, more open source is needed. It's just a great, great mission. Congratulations on the new job and good luck this year. We'll keep in touch. Thank you. And certainly see you at the Cloud Foundry Summit that's in San Francisco again this year. Santa Clara. Santa Clara, June okay. 13th through 15th. So every year you guys always have the fire code problem. <laughs> well, I think, um, and I'm going to go on record now and officially say this, this will be our last year there which I think everyone's excited about because I think we're all over okay. Santa Clara right now. <laughs> all right, well, we'll see you there. Abby Kearns, Executive Director of Cloud Foundry Foundation, here inside theCUBE, Power in the Cloud. This is uh, theCUBE's coverage of IBM Interconnect 2017. Stay with us, more coverage after this short break.